السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما والحمد لله على كل حال اللهم اني اسالك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا واملا متقبلا امين يا رب العالمين so here we are with our session number 29 uh, last week we started to learn um fail so um let's see how much you have understood uh, from your previous session uh, so let's start with review um a fail term has three requirements it has to have three in it who remembers the three things in a fail in a word that is going to be called fail it should have what nobody knows no answers can you all hear me no no it has to have action right it has to have action right it should be an action word then it has to have a doer right and it has to have tense right so your fail for it to be tam which means it for it to be complete it's you just don't worry about uh, you know a regular fail any fail has to have three if anyone asks you in if anyone asks you the three things that the, that is required for a word to be fail is that it has to have an action it has to have a doer and it has to have a tense otherwise you cannot call it a fail okay is this something clear action doer tense and here keep that in mind for a complete fail for a complete fail it has to have all the all three requirements met for it to be called fail okay so now no even even when you are looking at jumla failure if i give you one word like nasara it is a complete sentence it does not have an outside doer or a maf'ul yes uh, jumla failure can have an outside doer where you know there is a doer outside of the fail and it can have a maf'ul a detail done to but every fail if you remember your previous session every fail by itself is a how is it different from um an english verb who can uh, remind me how is a word helped different from nasara it has an inbuilt doer it has a doer inside it does it com- convey can it convey a complete thought yes right it can give a complete meaning the complete you know thought is delivered just by word nasara okay so if you have that in mind inshallah things will be very easy for you okay so every fail if it is this guy tam if it is a complete fail it is by itself a whole a complete sentence you do not need any more information so can we say based on this information that i am sharing with you can you say that verb is an equivalent of a fail can we ever say that that verb and um, fail are equivalent of each other no they are verb of an english language is not equivalent of fail because a verb does not have a pronoun it it's just one word which makes sense but does not convey a complete thought helped does not tell you who helped who did he help no it does not have all that information however when you have nasara it give give you a complete sentence in form of he helped and you can easily put a full stop at the end of he helped hmm? i said full stop she answered full stop it, you know it's a complete sentence i hope this is clear but in english in english when i say 
she helped or she said i have to have two things brought together it's not just an a, a verb um you know it's not just one verb that, that is doing all but nasara by by itself has a pronoun which was he and there was an action word which is helped that has a tense yes so that is what we started learning last week and you will continue focusing on that and um inshallah we will know how we can look at the word and we can find out if it is past or present future tense if you remember from your previous session we have already figured out that in case of arabic language fail mudare which is a present tense it also has a meaning of future tense based on the context it can be used for future as well okay sometimes because in quran you will see many events that will be there but those events will happen in future on the day of qiyama and fil mudare has capacity to convey both you do not need to learn future tense as you have to do in english like you have to learn will not will shall no you do not have to do that you will just learn mudare and it will have both meanings and we did briefly went over that sometimes events of future are denoted by madi sometimes your past tense in arabic in quran is about future events do you know why this happened do you, and does anyone remember why that happens that you know we are using a, yes sometimes it will be for dua and yeah so it is sometimes The, you know the, this past tense is used for future events to denote that they are bound to happen there is no way around it it is as if something is written in stone when we have used a past tense for an action okay keep that in mind so that you know when something is being expressed in form of past tense and however we know that future is uh, in the event is still to happen in future that use of past tense is telling you that it is sure to happen okay and sometimes when we are using it for dua so we are we, because of our tawakkul in allah subhanahu wa taala and also because we know that there like if you um, look at the example of radiyallahu anhum we know allah was pleased with ashab of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right so keep those things in mind but you do not need to remember them at this point but for tafsir those things are handy those people who understand why something is said the way it is being said those people are able to comprehend quran with lot more ease inshallah and i'm sure you all will be able to do so so let me um ask you a few more questions and then we'll inshallah go to our you know uh, our thing for today inshallah so in case of past tense that we started last week doer can be figured out by looking at the beginning of the word middle of the word or end of the word what do you think very well done it is going to be figured out by looking at the end of the word barak allahu fikum now tell me so now when i say barak barak is also a past tense barak allahu fikum as if allah has already given you barak i'm making a dua for you but i am 100% sure that my rab always listen he is not same he is asmi asmi because he always always listens he is ever hearing right and his sama is not like me and you right you know sometimes we are listening but not listening but you know allah subhanahu wa taala when he list, uh, you know when it comes to allah he listens to each and every thing okay now you look at um, the next question third root letter in case of fail madi this was madi in, in, in case of fail madi starting from hunna till the end of the table will take 
very well done. So this sukoon is very important. For the beginners, this sukoon is very important. People get confused between at attached pronoun and a doer pronoun just because they do not remember the fact that third root letter in case of past tense, starting from hunna till nahnu will get saku. I hope you are all with me. Okay. The pronoun that you can see with your own very eyes, meaning to say the pronoun that is visible is called Baris, yeah, it's a difficult name, but, and, you know, this is something that I threw it out there at you uh, girls, but, um, um, you know, if you remember it, it, it is going to be helpful. If you do not, just, you know, try to remember the concept of, you know, what is the visible pronoun and hidden pronoun, okay? So, hidden pronoun are called mustatir, mustatir, ad-damir al-mustatir, right? In case of hua, hiya, fail, madi, doer pronoun is blank in terms of visibility. Very well done. It is hidden in terms of visibility. Yes, it is. The doer pronoun is going to be rough in status. There is no doubt about it. I do not disagree with uh, my sisters, but you cannot see doer pronoun in case of hua and hiya. Everyone with me so far? And we will go over the table and we will make sure that each and every one of you knows this. So there are, you know, I have put these questions, standard uses of past tenses and non-standard uses of past tense. So, um, you know, right now, I want you to go over, with, over that information. But even if you do not, each and every one of you do not remember that, that's quite all right as well. But if you know that, is there any harm in knowing extra information? If it helps you with your, um, uh, um, you know, understanding your tafsir when Ustad Numan or Ustad Zafar Hathashmi or uh, your, um, you know, Ustad Zamadiyam, you are listening to the lectures and if she's, you know, she, she's using those terms and, it, or, you know, wh whoever scholar you follow, and I just took some names, but if you know that information, if it helps you comprehend the thing better, there is no harm. So, you know, if you are someone who has done it for past two, three years or have done it in, in the past as well, try to make sure that, you know, you have, have those gone over in, you know, with a lot of focus so that it sticks to you in, in your mind, inshallah. Okay. Now, coming back to, um, I think we have gone over this entire information in terms of our questions. I hope everyone is now clear in our review. I have made questions out of the slide. And I'm, if everyone is um, good with this information, type one. And I want each and every one of you to know that every fail is Joomla failure if it is a term fail. If it is a complete fail, there are exceptions. And those exceptions we are going to learn very soon. But if you know that, you know, in general, when you start learning your fail, you do not jump onto your exceptions first. You learn what is fail, right? And nasara, ja'ala, khalaqa, all are complete sentences. There should, no, uh, there should be no doubt about it. Okay. And this thing, uh, this information should also uh, be with each and every one of you. All students should know it is not fail and verb of English is not one and the same thing. Okay. So, um, who has memorized their uh, past tense table? Because that was your homework, right? I did not give you any uh, sheet to work on. Who can come? Uh, raise your hands, my dear sisters, and I can ask. Um, first five sisters to come and recite this table. And here, instead of going in columns, how we do it in Muslim chart, you are going to follow in rows, okay? You are going to read your chart uh, table in rows. Is this clear? So it is Nasara, Nasara, Nasaru. So you, uh, I see Sister Rana, Sister Zarina, uh, and there are, there's one more, um, they have memorized it and uh, 
So raise your hands. I have to, I'm going to pick the one who, uh, uh, the first five who raise their hands first. So who has their hand raised? Okay, Sister Sabra. Okay. Sister Sabra, unmute yourself and go for it. Let me make sure that. Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Um, is do you want me to do with Nasara or with, uh, the same word, right? Yeah, Nasara is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Nasara, Nasara, Nasaru, Nasarat, Nasarata, Nasaratum. Hmm? Okay, Nasarat, Nasarat, Nasarata. Hmm? Nasarta. Now we are Hunna. Hun Nas Nasarta, Nasarta, Nasartum. Nasarti, Nasartuma, Nasartuna, Nasartu, Nasarna. Yeah, so just on your Hunna, remember? Yeah. There's Hunna, Nasarna. That's only nasarna. thing. Yeah, Hunna, Nasarna. That is only thing. And Barakallahu, very well done. Who wants to go next? I need at least, uh, okay, Sister Hina, go for it. Can I hide the table? Yes. Okay. Very good job. And I like that answer. Um, One second. Let me hide it. Yeah. Now go for it. Hmm. Okay. Um, Nasara, Nasara, Nasaru, Nasarat, Nasarta, Nasarna, Nasarta, Nasartuma, Nasartum, um, Nasarti, Nasartuma, Nasartuna, Nasartu, Nasarna. Barakallahu Fikri. Well done. Aisha, unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I will be listening to Dwan Rahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Nasara, Hua, Nasaru, uh, Nasara, Alif, Kuma, Nasar, uh, Nasaru, Nasarat, Nasarta, and Tum antum, nasarti anti, nasar tuma antuma, nasar uh, nasar tunna antuma. Antuna, antuna nasar tunna. Nasarti, I did or nasarti, right? Yeah, you did nasarti. Now you are ana. Nasar tu ana, na no. Nasar tu ana. Hmm. And after na nahnu. Did you do it from your memory or you, you were not looking anywhere? I spent a lot of time yesterday. <laughs> no, I memorized it. <laughs> Barakalaupi. So proud of you. So proud of you. And so proud of Hina. So proud of Sister Sabra. Barakalaupi. Who wants to come next? I, I want Ranas to come. And Salma. Salma and Ranas. One of you can you know unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. Um, Nasara Hua. Uh, Nasara Huma. Um, and uh, Nasaru Hum. Uh, Nasarat uh, Hia. Uh, nas, uh, nasar, nasarata uh, Huma. And Nasarna uh, Honna. And then uh, nasar, Nasarta Anta, anta hmm. uh, Nasartuma Antuma hmm. and uh, Nasartum Antum Nasarti an, uh, Anti uh, hmm. Nasartuma Antuma hmm. and uh, nas, Nasartuna uh, Antuna then uh, Nasartu Ana hmm. and uh, Nasarna uh, Nahno Barakallahu Fik Barakallahu Fik so proud of you very well done. So now, who wants to come? Is uh, Salma ready? 
Yes, sister. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, so nasara huwa, nasara huma, nasaru hum, uh, nasarat hiya, nasarata huma, nasarna hunna, nasarta uh, anta, nasartuma, uh, antuma, nasartum, Antum Nasorti uh, Anti Nasartuma Antuma Nasartuna Antuna uh, Nasartu Anna uh, Nasorna Nahnu Barakalahu feet. Very well done. So proud of you all. So proud of you all. So, uh, Azra, you want to go? Yes, Aslamu alaikum Ramatullah Brakatahu. Nasara, Nasara, Nasaru, Nasarat, Nasarata, Nasarna, Nasarta, Nasartuma, Nasartum, Nasarti, Nasartuma, Nasartuna, Nasartu, Nasarna. Very well. Uh, let me ask one more sister and then I think um, that will be it. Sister Lena, I have never heard your voice. I have not heard your voice in a long time. I want to hear you. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. Nasara, Nasara, Nasaru, Nasarat, Nasarata, Nasarna, Nasarta, Nasartuma, Nasartum, Anti, Nasarti, Antuma, Nasartuma. Antuna Nasartuna Anna Nasartu Nahanu Nasarna. Barakalahufi. Very well done. Beautiful job. May Allah accept it from all of you. And I'm sure, you know, the rest sister um, of my sisters have also memorized it and there should not be a problem there, right? And we can go ahead. So when we are looking at Fail Madi, we are looking at the end of the world. Right? We have just did the review and we figured out that we have to look at the end of the world, right? So for a doer, we are going to look at the end of the world and it will tell us who the doer is based on what is at the end of the world, right? Except in two cases, which are Hua and Hia of Al, you are not going to be able to figure out your doer and it is because you are going to be able to figure out your doer but the pronoun is not there we all know that type one if you all have understood it from the last session i would like you all to know one thing fail madi is something that is not going to change its ending you know its ending never changes when you learned about an ending that never changes what did you call it in your ism very well done you, i i did not finish my question and sister elena is here with her answer <laughs> subhanallah so your similarly in fail when you have your fail madi what are you going to know about it you are going to know that it is also non-flexible and the term for non-flexible in Arabic is mabni. Okay, keep that in mind. Okay, if you see mabni being said for fil madi, so that is where that mabni is coming because if you go back to your slides for your ism, you will find fully flexible mu'arrab, munsarif, non-flexible mabni and partly flexible mamnu minasar for ghair munsarif, something like that is in your slides and this is what is, uh, I remember writing on your previous slides and you have all those notes. So if um, anyone asked you about fail madi, because it is a fixed ending. So that is why, because of the ending being fixed, your um, fail is going to be, um, uh, going, uh, going to be mabi, okay? Keep that in mind, okay? Fixed ending remains unchanged. Everyone with me so far? Alhamdulillah. Okay, so we learned about something called hidden pronouns and visible pronouns. So, Nasara, does it have 
Damir Baris or Mustatir? You are going to write B for Baris if it is visible, and you are going to write M for Mustatir. Sister Aisha is already on board with the you know abbreviation, and she has already answered it is Mustatir because you do not see anything. When I take you to Nasara, and there is an Aleph ending, and we are going to say that you know Damir is Baris, and there is you know you can see it, and this is. This Aleph is telling you how many? Two. Nasaru, Damir Baris or Mustatir? It is Baris, it is visible. Baris means visible, right? And Mustatir means hidden. So here, Wow tells you that there is home in this, you know, home is the doer of Nasaru, which is three or more, which is three or more. Right? And Aleph, Aleph has no grammatical function. In here, this Aleph has no grammatical function. If you can remember this, here it has grammatical function because we are calling it a doer, but here Aleph does not have any grammatical function. Keep that in mind. In case of Nasarat, what do you see? Do you see it mustatir? So, but what is this star doing here? What is this ta telling you? That this is for feminine and I'm not going to touch it otherwise. Ma, ma, the Damir itself is hidden. It is a harf, harputanis. It is the harf that makes your nasara uh, uh, have you know, a, a feminine doer, which is hidden somewhere, but I cannot see. It is mustatir. When I come to nasarata, My dear uh, uh, sister, there's a question uh, that what is Mabni? The, this ending is never going to change. This ending is never going to change. The entire past tense it, ending is fixed. You will see some of all where you will see a change in the ending. When we will be doing our fail mudare, you will see the ending is changing. So at that time, this, will, this information will come handy that fail madi is very stubborn. It never changes. It never changes its harka. The harka remains the same. And that is why we call it mabini. It's non-flexible. It's not changed. Very well done. Is it clear, Ranas? Yeah. And we, when we will do fail mudare, inshallah, you you will understand that what, what um, do we mean by that and inshallah when once we do our practice uh, that will be even more clear so i just let's just finish this and then we'll do practice and that will be inshallah more clear so when i came to nasarata what is how do, do uh, is the damir mustatir or baris it is baris so where is damir alif is damir and it is visible and it is baris what is ta telling here what is ta it is for feminine. It is for feminine. It is the same ta that came here. It is the same ta that came here, but here it is. It is. It has a fatha, and we will learn later on why this fatha is there. Why the sukun changed to fatha? That is a. That is for a later time. But remember, ta was for feminine, and now the doer is being denoted by alif. What is the sign of doer in nasarna? What tells you who the doer is three or more females? In case of Nasarna, noon. Everyone with me so far? Is your pronoun visible or hidden? It is visible, right? So it, it is Baris? Okay. When you come to Nasarta, and I told you, the trick to remember this is very easy. Anta nasarta, antuma nasartuma, antum nasartum, anti nasarti, antuma nasartuma, antunna nasartunna. The ending of your pronoun and the ending of your fail madi is going to be the same. Both tafatha, both tuma tuma, tum tum, ti ti, tuma tuma, tunna tunna. Everyone with me so far? Is this easy way to remember it? Alhamdulillah. And this sakoon, this sakoon nobody should miss. From hunna till nahnu, 
there is only sukoon on the third root letter. Do not miss this, inshallah. Okay? When I come to nasarti, do, you, do I see my pronoun baris or mustatir? B. And nasartuma, again, it is visible. You can see two is there. Alif here is denoting the number, okay? Noon here is denoting the number, okay? Here, Alif is denoting the number and Noon is denoting the number. The pronoun in actuality is Ta, but, you know, inshallah, you, we will learn it a little more later on. So, Tu here is denoting your Ana. So, all are bars. Rest are all bars. So, this is, you know, they're all visible. You can look at the word and you are able to point out where your pronoun is. And this is what we have also done in terms of visibility, that there are two types of pronouns, hidden pronoun and a visible pronoun, right? Hidden pronouns are called Damir Mustatir. And they are only going to be in case of two of all that are Ua and Hia. The rest are visible pronouns in case of real Madi. You all were able to appreciate your, the rest, you know. I hope everyone has understood. What was the other type of pronouns that we have learned? There was another type we learned in the beginning. We learned in terms of being separate or being attached, right? So we, we uh, that was another concept, but we, we in, I'm asking about th this one, remember? Um, here, Munfasil and Muttasil. And these are your previous pronouns. And you all know about hua, hiya, right? These are your hua, huma, hum, hiya, huma, hunna, anta, antuma, antum, anti, antuma, antunna, ana, nahnu. They are all your independent pronouns. And hu, hi, huma, hima, hum, him, ha, huma, hima, hunna, hinna, ka, kuma, kum, ki, kuma, kunna, ya, yi, ni, na are your attached pronoun. They are muttasil pronoun. If I ask you about these pronouns that we are calling baris, what do you think? Are they independent or they attached? What do you think? What does your mind say? Very well done. They are attached as well. So remember when I was going over your pronouns, I was very particular about how I phrased everything. If you go back to your lectures, you will find out. I've always said that, you know, the attached pronoun that we are doing right now, and those are in form of who, he, huma, hima, ha, huma, hima, hunna, hinna, ka, kuma, kum, ki, kuma, kunna, yi, ni, na. All of them, who, he, what is the status of attached pronouns? What can be the status of attached pronoun? Attached, I'm talking about these attached pronouns. Nasvarjar, right? Nasvarjar, nas or jar. When they come attached to an ism and make an idafa, what is the status of attached pronoun there? It is only jar, right? And when they attach themselves to a fail or harf nas, what is the status of pronoun then? It's going to be nas, right? Everyone understood it? Or I'm going too fast? Alhamdulillah. So pronoun is going to be jar if it is attached to an ism. Always going to be jar when it is attached to an ism. Always, because whenever a pronoun attaches itself to an ism, to any other ism other than the mir, because only it is going to attach itself to another ism, not a damir is not going to get attached to another damir. Okay. It is going to attach to another ism. For example, um, kitabuna. So kitabuna means our book. So Na is always going to be jar because it is book of hours, right? So because of idafa construction, your pronoun is always jar in status when it attaches itself to an ism. If it attaches itself to a harf jar, what should it be? If it is attached to the end of a harf jar, like fihi, anhu, or... Um, Mm, like uh, lahu, so it should always be jar in status, right? Does it make sense? 
So it is going to make a aljar majroor fragment. It is going to be jar and status. But when your pronoun, when these guys are attaching themselves to a fail, they are always detail. They are always detail and they are nas. And we they did it, you know, when I was teaching you the status, but we, we can review it when we are going to do our practice uh, in a few minutes. And th these will be the only option for these is nas jar. Can you all remember this? These attached pronouns can only be nas jar. So who he, huma, hima, hum, him, ha, huma, hima, hunna, hinna, ka, kuma, kum, ki, kuma, kunna, ye, ni, na are always nasp or jar. When attached to a half nasp, yeah, they are going to be nasp in status. When attached to a fail, they are going to be nasp in status. When attached to an isam, these guys are going to be always jar in status. Jar in status because of idafa, and when attached to harf jar, they are always going to be jar in status. Are you all with me so far? Or it's too hard? Okay. But what did we know about these pronouns? These attached pronouns. They are all what in status? These are all harf in status because they are doer pronouns, because they are the doer. Right? Because they are doer pronouns like anta. You helped. You is the doer. You is the doer. That is why all these pronouns are going to be a rough in status. Right? Your doer is always rough in status. The status for doer, doer is a rafa. Okay? A rough. Keep that in mind. It's a very important concept. Okay? Because why they are rough in status? Because they are the doers. They too, males, helped. Because they did some action. And your doer is always rough in status. I hope this is a little more clear now. Have you learned in, you know, when you were growing up um, in English, you must have learned about active and passive verbs? Yes? How many of you are very well versed with active and passive? So let me give you a sentence. He ate. Is it uh, active or passive? Hmm. Okay. An apple was eaten. What is it? So what's the difference? How do you, uh, how is he ate an apple or an apple was eaten different? Doer. Very well done. Very well done. So you had a doer when you, when you, when we have this, uh, had the sentence, he ate an apple, but an apple was eaten. This sentence does not have a doer. So which one is active? He ate an apple or an act, apple was eaten? An apple was eaten is, he ate is active tense. Is, is an, in terms, you know, it's an active thing and an apple was eaten is passive. Hmm? Everyone with me so far? So if you know the doer of a fail, okay? If a doer of a fail is known, then your fail is called ma'loom. Where, what, what do you think is the root letter of ma'loom? From ilm, very well done. So if you have the knowledge of the doer, if you have a knowledge of a doer, which means if your tense is active, then your fail is going to be fail, madi, maloom. Everyone with me so far? Now don't focus on ilm only. Now gain this ilm. Okay? So if the doer of your action is known, your fail is Malum. When I said Nasara, he helped. Is doer known? He helped. Yes, you know, he, th this was a male who helped, right? Doer was known, my dear sisters. 
Nasara means he helped. So he is the doer. If I ask you the doer in Nasara, you are going to tell me it is he helped is the meaning and he is the doer in that word. So now think of it. So you, will you call it malum or no? Will you call it active or no? You will call it active, right? If on the other hand, if I make it sound like he was helped, what do you think about this one? Is doer known? It is passive, right? It is passive. You doer is not known here, right? But in case of he helped, you clearly have identified your doer, which is he, right? He is the doer here. I hope this is clear. He was helped, doer is unknown, but he helped, doer is known. So the, the, the Madi that we learned is, should it be Malum then? Fail Madi Malum, can I call the Madi that we have learned? That this is our Madi Malum because everywhere we were able to figure out the doer. The doer was right there. Nasara is he helped. Nasara, they two males helped. Nasaru, they three or more males helped. It is malum because we have the knowledge of the doer. If your doer is unknown, your fail is called majhul. Majhul, what do you think is the stem word for majhul? Jahala. Zamanai Jahaliyat, right? So from there you, you get the word, okay? Jim Halam are the root letters. And so Jahil is someone who doesn't know anything, right? Ignorant. Hmm. So now if you are ignorant about your fail, if your doer is if your doer is unknown, the fail is going to be called majhul. Because its doer is unknown. Nobody knows who's, who, who is the doer of this fail. Is this something clear? We will uh, uh, get to that. You know, uh, 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 that's a very good question, inshallah. Um, and we will, inshallah, figure that out as well when we are going to start our um, majhul. So, but for now, just I, I, I'll try to learn this um, definition, okay? So both your madi and mudare can have two forms, which are malum and majhul. What will be the English for malum? Known and uh, or the active, right? You can call it active and majhul will be passive. Okay, because most of people have learned tenses in form of active and passive, right? So uh, unknown or passive is majhul and known and active is ma'loom. Okay, keep that in mind, inshallah. So now again, um, just one last time, I'm going to, you know, uh, tell you this, every fail has an inbuilt pronoun, every fail ma'loom, every fail that is ma'loom, has an inbuilt pronoun that you that will tell you who did the action. Okay, so when you look at third person masculine here, you already have figured out nasara. The pronoun is hidden. Nasara has alif here that is telling you the doer is two males, right? And nasaru is telling you the the doer is three or more males. When it comes to third person feminine. Again, we have very clearly understood it I, from what I can see from your answers that you know that pronoun is still hidden here, but ta is denoting that there is some female, there was some she or it who did the action. In case of Nasarata, same thing, ta is do, do, only denoting the gender of a doer, but Aleph is the one who is the actual doer who is denoting the two females actually helped. Nasarna. Who was the doer? Noon Fatah was the doer of an action, which was your attached pronoun here. Everyone with me so far? Or if, is it too much? 
I need answers from 17 sisters. Type two, if you have not understood it. When you go to uh, your second person, things are easy to memorize in terms of that, that like, you know, your ending is similar to your anta, nasarta, antuma, nasartuma, antum, nasartum, and nasarti, anti, nasartuma, antuma, and this nasartunna, tadama is telling you that this is a pronoun and noon is there for plural, meme is there for plural, alif is there for dual, alif is there for dual. Is this clear? Type one, if it is clear, and type two, if it is not. Basically, your ta, ta, ta is for you, okay? The rest here, the rest structure here is the number that uh, the rest, Alif is going to tell you the number. Alif is going, giving you the number. Meme is telling you that there are, plu, there are males that are three or more. Noon with Shraddha is telling you that there are females that are more than three, okay? And it is for plural. I have written it in Arabic, but I will inshallah put it in English as well so that everyone is able to understand. But I'm saying it just that, that you know, Alif is sign of dual. Noon, Shadda is sign of feminine plural. Meme is sign of masculine plural. Clear? And we will not be, you know, going into that much detail at this point. It's just an introduction. So whosoever is able to memorize, good for them. And whosoever is not, that is okay. Um, like, you know, if they, if they are able to identify and memorize, that is good enough too. Which one do you want me to check, dear? Antunna Nasartunna. Oh, yeah, I am going to change it. I will fix it for you. Okay. Sorry, my mistake. It, it should be Noon Chadda. Okay. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. I will fix it. Now, uh, facts to remember, we have learned them from before. And just a revision, as most of you were concerned that, you know, we, we are afraid that we may forget what we have learned before. So all your pronouns are in terms of type, all are. Type it so that, you know, all are proper, okay? All are proper. Pronouns are non-flexible, right? All pronouns are non-flexible. And we have determined that, that, you know, your Aleph is going to remain like Aleph or your Huma is going to remain like Huma, Hima is going to remain like Hima, it's not going to change their ending at all, okay? They are all non-flexible. So inbuilt dual pronoun in a fail, hidden versus visible are rough in status. Is this something understandable? Because when we are saying, when we are calling them dual pronoun, you should remember from your knowledge of statuses of an SM that your doer is always a rough in status, right? That is an easy one. So now we have already done this and I just added that sometimes, you know, your um, past tense can be denoting a near past. For example, in Ikama, when Muazzin says, Qad is Salah, is this talking about the salah that was just established and, uh, and he's calling you all to salah? Isn't that too, true, right? So called qamatis salah, the salah it has just established. So come and pray and make your rose, right? So, and sometimes your past tense can denote a very distant past. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kazabat qawmunuhin al mursalina. So kazabat. This, the, the people of Nuh, alayhi salam, they belied the messengers. Did it happen just a year ago in Medina or Makkah? Or was it a, a, an event of a distant past? It was a remote past, right? It was a distant past. Everyone with me? And rest we have already done. So we'll not go into that. So let's do the practice and then we'll call it a day, inshallah. 
So here we are with some past tenses. Allama. What do you think? Allama means to teach. So who will be the doer here in Allama? Who can tell me? Very well done. He is the doer. Okay, Hua. Arada. Is it a one word or there are two words there? Arada hu. What are the words? Arada and home. Right? What is the doer? Arada. Who is the doer of Arada? Doer of Arada. The word is ending with dot patha. So he is the doer. Okay? He is the doer. He presented whom? Them. So whom? What did you do? Do you think? He presented them. What do you think about whom here? It's an attached pronoun. What will be the, it's a detail. Yes, it's an attached pronoun. It's a detail and it's the, the status is nasb, right? Every time, every time your pronoun, attached pronoun is attached to a fail, it is going to be nasb in status if it is this form of pronoun. If it is this form of pronoun, which is whom, huma, him, who, he, it is only going to be nasb or jar. But when it is attaching itself to a fail, it, the only option is nasp. Everyone with me or no? In this form, when a, fail, when a pronoun is attached to a, a fail, it only is nasp. Arada, do you see anything attached to arada? It, it, it's one word, arada. Do you see anything, any alif, any vow, any tasakun, any ta fata alif, any, any noon? Do you see any of that? Is the pronoun visible? Aisha? Is the pronoun visible in arada? No. What are the two cases, Aisha, in which you see the pronoun is invisible or Mustatir. Whom is an attached pronoun that is a done to? It is only a done to. Like, you know, he presented them. Them is the detail. Them is the detail. He is a doer of an action, right? And your detail, again, right? So your detail is going to be Nusman status. And we, have, we need to know that this form of pronoun, as we have learned in the past, can be Nusburger, but can only be Nus when it is attaching itself to the end of a fail like this. Inshallah, you, you should go back to the recording as well. And this will be very clear, Inshallah. I, I don't think you will have problem. Now look at this word. Azalla huma. One word or two words? Two words. So what do you think about azalla? Azalla. There is nothing added, no alif, no vow. And you start from the beginning, third person, right? Alif, vow, ta sekun, ta fata alif, noon fata, ta fata, tuma, tum, ti, tuma, tunna, tu, na. There is nothing. So the only option is he. And now this huma, what will be the status of this huma? It's a detail. So it's going to be Nusbin status. The translation that you will see is he made them, he made those to slip. He made slip. Who, he, who did he make a cause to slip? He made those to slip, like these Huma were Adam alayhi salam and our mother Hawa and this, he was shaitan. Shaitan made them slip. Like, you know, them to, you don't put them in English, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in your normal English. 
but you know just because we are understanding each and every word so that's why it is important that we know that the number is two here now akhraja what do you think akhraja huma just uh, forget about this fa and akhraja huma one word or two words there are two words akhraja who is the doer in akhraja kharaji ma the root letters and there is nothing added so he is the doer and huma is the detail everyone with me so far okay so nas in status because the details are always nas in status now think about this one wa adna wa adna very well done okay let me change let me change and i, I let me make it wa adna if i make this sukoon change it to fatha then what will happen two words and how will you translate wa ada he so he took a covident from us right so he will be the doer of an action and na is going to be the receiver of action if this haraka is changed from sukoon to a fatha there are only three harakas this is no not actually a haraka because there is only fatha dama kasra this is just a sukoon if i change the sukoon to fatha it is going to be he took a covenant from us but here we took covenant right because of the sukoon on the last root letter any question ittakhaztum was a doer ittakhaztum tum so who is going to be the doer it's is antum is for look 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 carefully ittakhaztum ittakhaztum tum antum ittakhaztum so the doer is going to be ha huh? not them there is no them the doer is antu do doer is antu and antu you all took okay you all took ittakhaza means to take so you all took because of antu ittakhaztu everyone got it or no Ranas, are you with us? Hena, like nasartu itta khastu. Very well done. Okay. Now pull to. You are just going to take it to your pronoun. Yes, and we are going to do more practice, Sister Roxana, and that is why you know we. I'm going to do. Uh, you know, make a lo long. Um, you know, practice sheet for you all, inshallah. So pull to. anto right just like ending is the same so it is matching the end you know your independent pronoun anto kulto anto kulto now look at this one akhazatkum skip fa skip fa and just focus on akhazatkum what do you think how many words very well then i, I for my first question is still there so two words akhazat plus kum akhazat plus kum the doer of akhazat is feminine doer because of ta sukoon right ta sukoon feminine doer hmm? and kum is going to be the detail it seized you all it seized you all clear or no go to um we have one minute badala fast now fast i need a fast responses badala doer is hua badala 
he is the doer or who is the doer. Zolamu, Zolamu, Zolamu. What tells you that it is home? Where is a sign of home? Wow, wow is the doer. Anzalna, Anzalna. Fakulna. Anzalna is going to be nahnu, right? Anzalna is going to be nahnu. Fakulna, skip fa, kulna. Just focus on kulna. Kulna. Sakun before. Noon fatalif. So it is going to be, the doer is going to be. We. We said. In fajarat. Skip fa. Just focus on in fajarat. It is going to be the doer because of the tasakun is going to be here. Kultum, again, I just did it for, you know, because it was in the, you know, in, in the practice slide. So, antum, very well done. So, I will have to end the session here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I will send you this as a homework and a little bit more. Uh, kindly keep reviewing your slides whatever we have done today and inshallah um, um, um we'll uh, catch up uh, on wednesday and we'll do more practice and this will be clear so, uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh